because childbirth was just oh so common, we were writing off the pain of people who birth children altogether. Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for coming back if you've been here before, or hi, welcome if you're new. My name's Mickey, I'm a therapist, and we talk about therapisty things on this channel. Today, we are talking about Paul and Morgan a little bit, um, but we're also just broadly talking about birth trauma, which uh, I wanna be super clear from the jump. If birth trauma, child uh, or infant death or loss, miscarriage, like just pregnancy stuff, like baby stuff generally is a sore spot for you or you have trauma around that issue, we're gonna talk about that today. And so please take care of yourself. There's a playlist up here of like cute, happy, fun times that don't have anything to do with this. So please feel free to, you know, nope and not watch content that's going to push your buttons because I want you to take care of yourself. So I want to be super transparent. I hesitated in making this video because I recognize that I've made a lot of content about Paul and Morgan lately. And I also want to be sensitive to discussing this issue because Morgan has outwardly stated that this is something that traumatized her and I am not at all interested in using my platform or my expertise to heap further hurt or pain on top of someone in the middle of a situation like that. However, I do think that there is a really useful conversation to be had here about the issue of uh, birth trauma generally. So I wanna do some educating, some resource providing, some just like discussion about trauma generally and about birth trauma specifically as a phenomenon. And so like, you know, I guess that's my caveat. Also, I wanna be super clear, um, the video that I'm gonna make, like I, I do have a lot of empathy for Morgan in the stuff that she has discussed and talked about in regards to how childbirth did not turn out the way that she had hoped it would. And I think this is a very important moment for us to honor that we can have empathy for a person while also acknowledging that their behavior is hurtful, is harmful, is in my opinion, like not guided by, uh, you know, morality or like the appropriate ethics and what have you. And so those two things can exist at the same time. Do I agree with or abide by the beliefs and, and like, you know, like the purity culture stuff and all the, the fundamentalist teachings that Paul and Morgan peddle? No. And I also have empathy for the fact that this person has been traumatized and that there are like cultural factors that potentially could make that trauma worse. So I want to discuss that. So we're talking about birth trauma, but also how that sort of dovetails with like fundamentalist culture and those things and just like general education about the things. So thanks in advance for bearing with me. If this video is a little bit of a mess, I'll try to put chapters in the thing to make it uh, easier to navigate. So like I said, Paul and Morgan uploaded a video on their channel called like Life Q&A or something wherein they discuss childbirth and things like that. And I was made aware of this. And so I sort of scrubbed through it and noticed the section where Morgan talks about birth being very traumatizing and like having a lot of fear about future pregnancies and things like that. So that was sort of like the jumping off point for this video. But I wanted to talk about this also because this is not an uncommon phenomenon in the fundamentalist culture that Paul and Morgan are a part of. Birth trauma is common in medical environments, but it's also common in like unmedicated home birth environments. And I think that's an important truth for us to honor that birthing a child generally is inherently a trauma. I know that a lot of people will, will probably like be weirded out by me saying that, but I do think it's important to acknowledge that like the origins of the word trauma, for example, it's a medical term that's used to describe a wound to the body. And the mental health field has also used this word to describe like wounds that exist in, uh, you know, like our mental health nervous system realm. And so when we talk about birth, it's very important for us to acknowledge that even in an uncomplicated things going to plan birth, there is still wound or wounds that happen to the body and this can be traumatizing to a person. Our nervous system is wired in such a way that we naturally are aware of things that cause us pain and injury and we try like hell to avoid those things. Like it's a survival instinct. So when we go through something that is painful or damaging or difficult in that regard, it may very well be traumatizing to you. I also wanna be clear and, and like pause here for a second. I don't mean to insinuate that all people who have gone through birth do have birth trauma. That's also not true. Some people have birth children and don't have trauma about that that's fine. I don't want to prescribe trauma to someone who doesn't have it, but I do really want to honor and validate the experiences of a lot of people. I, as always, I'm gonna link all the, the sources and the things in the description, but in looking for statistics for this, around 45% of people who have birthed a child reported experiencing trauma after the fact. Um, we can also see a clear link between birth trauma and the development of PTSD, though that statistic is smaller, it hovers around like four to 8%. As a quick note here though, it is very difficult to measure these things, like quantifying statistics about whether someone perceived something as traumatizing is tricky in and of itself. And I think there's also uh, a conversation to be had about the people who are getting missed in, in these types of self-report surveys. And so it's fair to say that the number of people who are traumatized by birth is potentially higher. For uh, reference, this 
this is a, a common issue in trying to measure how often people are sexually assaulted. And so those statistics tend to skew lower because people don't tend to report it. And so like grain of salt with the numbers. However, I think the clear takeaway here is that it's fair to say the large, uh, or not the majority, but a large number of people um, who have birthed a child have experienced some trauma because of that. And I very much want to validate that this is real. In the work that I have done as a clinician and in the discussions I've had with other clinicians in doing this work, it's very, very common to speak about birth trauma with clients and for them to not even realize that this was a thing that could be traumatizing in the first place. And so that's why I want to make this video because a lot of people are sort of shocked and, and horrified to find out that birthing a child is not the like, butterflies and rainbows and sparkles that we hear about in media especially but also because there are a lot of like sexist leanings in this discussion. For example, one of the articles again in the description discusses how uh, the American Psychiatric Association refused to honor birth trauma as a valid reason for a person to develop PTSD until the 1990s. This change was made in the 90s after I guess further discussion was had but the the line of thought was that PTSD could not develop from something that they deemed to be a normal and common part of life and so because childbirth was just oh so common we are writing off the pain of people who birth children altogether. I think this is really important for us to discuss especially in regard to like intersectional attitudes about healthcare and why in my opinion if you're a therapist you very much need to be practicing intersectional therapy because we cannot separate identity and then the way that sexism and racism affects our clients because we can't separate out parts of their identity. People are people and they're whole and they're not, you know, like boxes to be checked. And so we need to be honoring what people are bringing into the room. However, again, I'm going to link this in the description, but we know from the research that particularly black women, but people of color generally are three to four times more likely to experience negative outcomes in medical situations and complications and things like that as a direct result of the racism and discrimination that they experience and the sexism that they experience. And so this is really important for us to talk about. I also... <laughs> This whole video is just all caveats. I also want to pause here though, because there's a lot of fear mongering that happens, particularly in the fundamentalism community about the use of modern medical intervention in childbirth. And while it is so critically important to honor that the medical system is at the hands of like perpetuating and inflicting trauma on people, it is also entirely possible to find medical providers who are safe, who are validating, who will be compassionate to the things that you're going through and will do their best to minimize the trauma that occurs with childbirth. I don't want this video to be a PSA for like have an unsafe home birth or have a, an unmedicated or like unsupervised, uh, like medically unsupervised pregnancy or things like that. I very much want to encourage people to seek out the medical care that's available to you and to operate with what we know as like industry standard best practices for uh, preserving your own safety and safety of your children and things like that. And so like, please don't, don't be confused about that. <laughs> I think this is a nice moment to pause here and talk specifically about Paul and Morgan because they mentioned in this video um, that going to the hospital and receiving care was not something that they had originally planned on. They had planned to have a birth at home and then when they had medical complications ended up at the hospital. I will play that clip for you guys right now and then we will come back and discuss. Will you try for a home birth for baby number two? I, where I'm at right now is I will not do a home birth for baby number two, but I will try well, first of all, if there's even a baby number two, I literally, I'm not going to lie, you guys, I'm very traumatized. Like, the thought of me getting pregnant again is terrifying. Like, I could start crying about it right now. Um, the thought of me having another situation like that is terrifying. And, you know, my mom was like, well, it's not going to be another situation like that because you'll do it differently. And I'm like, still, like something else could go horrible. I don't know. So I'm very traumatized. But if there is a baby number two, it will be done in the hospital, probably the same place that we were. Um, and with the same team, hopefully. And but it will, I would like to do it naturally without an epidural and whatnot. Um, so that would be my go about. So this is the clip that I was talking about where Morgan discusses how traumatizing the whole experience was for her. Um, I don't want to speculate about her trauma specifically because I think that's irresponsible, but I wanted to discuss this generally, um, especially in regards to the like, let's not lump all medical providers <laughs> in together thing because Paul and Morgan also discussed later in the video that when they did go to the hospital, they were very nervous about 
the type of treatment that they would receive and things like that. And they were surprised to find that their medical team was actually very kind and validating. I have to praise God for the team of nurses and yeah. midwives and doctors that surrounded us. Seriously, like, that was it was a huge blessing. And honored a lot of the requests that they had about their birth. And so I do very much want to hold both of those things to be true at the same time that modern medical care and like healthcare in the United States especially can be very traumatizing and it is entirely possible to seek out science-based, evidence-based healthcare at like a medical facility that is safe and validating and like will minimize the trauma that you'll experience. I also wanted to discuss this in regard to the fundamentalism community specifically because this is a very common issue, like this distrust of medical providers generally. And so there's a strong desire to do home births um, and like avoid medical intervention at all. There are some folks in this community who don't engage with any prenatal care at all. And all of these things we know, like I said, are, are like contraindicated in the research and like are not ideally like safe without like the appropriate interventions and things like that. Not that all home births are unsafe, that's not what I'm saying either. But I think this is important to acknowledge because a lot of times these decisions are made as the result of like fear and trauma in these areas. And I think it's important to honor that, especially because a lot of the content that I make on this channel is in trying to encourage folks to go to therapy, to go back to therapy, um, to find a therapy provider who is safe and validating because folks have had such fucking terrible experiences with therapists. And so like, this is just an issue I think that hits really close to home for me because a lot of the work that I do is guided by trying to dispel like the myths and the trauma and the fear that exists around this field. And so I wanted to discuss that uh, in this realm also, which I think is a really nice dovetail for discussing the use of therapy and, and psychotherapy after encountering birth trauma. One of the resources that I'm going to link in the description is actually a randomized control trial. Hopefully it doesn't fucking disappear. This always happens to me when I link stuff where <laughs> when I'm looking at it, I can see the full text and then it disappears. Um, I might just honestly take pictures of it and try to like link it or something. We'll see. But the randomized control trial measured the effects of birthing people either receiving intervention like psychotherapy essentially after birth or not receiving intervention. I think I said that right. The two groups were like intervention as in like they got therapy and the other group was no therapy. And the impact of this is really surprising. I'm just gonna read it to you directly on my phone. The intervention that was conducted was a face-to-face -face visit 72 hours after birth and then a phone call four to six weeks after birth. So very minimal intervention. I think it's really important to note that. And the results at three month follow-up intervention group, people reported decreased trauma symptoms, low relative risk of depression, low relative risk of stress, low feelings of self-blame and confidence about future pregnancy was higher for these people than the control group people. This, I think, like if nothing else <laughs> speaks to how fucking important it is for people, especially uh, people who've experienced sexism, sexism and discrimination, to have even a minimal outlet, to have their experiences validated and honored and like explored in a non-judgmental space. Because again, I would like to note that the intervention here is so, so, so minimal. Like a, a phone call and one face-to-face -face visit after birth is not by any means like a high level of intervention, but the impact that that created was really significant. And so, especially if you are a person who has birthed a child, I want to encourage you to utilize whatever resources are available to you to seek out care and intervention. And like, if nothing else, just a safe place to discuss what you've experienced and to have that validated and honored. So much of the work that we do in therapy is just in giving people space to share how they feel and validating the fuck out of that. Uh, we know <laughs> from the research that the particular therapy modality that we're using is like minimally impactful when we talk about long-term impact because the relationship that you you develop with your provider is so much more important. When you feel safe, when you feel cared for and validated and like you trust this person, that's when we see change start to happen and that's when we see those really big impacts. And so I, I very much, again, just want to encourage people that there are therapists out there who will validate this trauma, that are doing the intersectional work to show up for you. And that even if you don't think that your birth was like that traumatizing, if you feel some type of way about it, you deserve to have space for that to be aired out and explored. Along with that, I think it's really important to talk about the fact that we can hold multiple things to be true at the same time. It is entirely possible that someone had a traumatizing birth or maybe is having a difficult time bonding with their infant because of that traumatizing birth and is also a really wonderful human being and a really wonderful parent who loves and cares about their child more than like anything on the face of planet Earth. A lot of times there's fear and shame in discussing these issues because if we say like my traumatizing ass fucking birth made it hard for me to, to bond with my baby, that people will immediately shame you and judge you and think that you're a bad 
parent or that you're not loving or caring. And we know that that's not fucking true. And again, there are so many therapists and providers who will be able to hold space for you and to honor that nuance for you and to really encourage you to give yourself space and time to work through the things that you very much deserve space and time to work through while also showing up for your family and being a good parent and like all of the things. I wanna be clear that it is not selfish. It is not self-indulgent. You are not being a baby. You are not being dramatic. If you really feel like you need some space and time to just discuss the stuff that you're working through. I'm doubtful that Paul and Morgan were ever, will ever see this. I know that they don't really watch videos that are critical of them, but if they do, I think it's important to honor that that goes for Paul and Morgan too. One of the other things I'm gonna link in the description actually is how it is fairly common for birthing partners to be traumatized by complicated or, or traumatizing births. So everybody who, you know, was involved in a traumatizing situation can very much have negative impact from that. And again, while I don't agree with the beliefs and teachings that Paul and Morgan perpetuate, I do think that they deserve to have time and space to work through those traumas. And so again, I'm doubtful that they'll ever see this, but for those of you who are watching, I think the message is the same. Birth can be very traumatizing and can feel very scary, particularly when we're immersed in a culture that teaches us that trauma is a good thing or the trauma is not real or that we don't deserve space or a trauma and so that especially like that idea is bullshit that's wrong <laughs> doesn't make you a bad person to need or want um, intervention in space and all of the things so I think that about wraps it up I'm sure that there's some stuff I'm forgetting or missing but for the time being I think the core takeaway <laughs> from this video is that birth can very much be traumatizing and that you also very much deserve time and space to work through that uh, if you need it as always there are links in the description to find therapists even therapists who are more affordable Open Path Collective is a sliding fee scale place that can find you more affordable therapists. And so I feel strongly that the vast majority of people who need services can very much find them, especially with the links in the description and things like that. So be kind to yourself, uh, give yourself space for the resources that you need. That said, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We make content like this. Sometimes we do other stuff. Generally, it's a fun time here. So I'd like to have you stay um, and share the video to help the channel grow and to help each other grow. And I will see you guys next Saturday. Bye.